G'day, it's Bill here from Side Real Trading. Every so often we get a very short opportunity to have a look at unusual or special equipment that we're supplying our clients. A few weeks ago we had a couple of hours to open up and examine a very special telescope, a Lunt LS-130MT. Now, it's kind of hard to describe this telescope. MT stands for either Modular Telescope or Multi-Purpose Telescope, I'm not really sure which, meaning you can swap in and swap out various parts. So yes, it's a solar telescope, but it's also a double stack if you want. It does hydrogen alpha, but also calcium K and white light solar viewing. And you can even take the echelons out of it and it becomes a triplet refractor for nighttime viewing and imaging. And I think the only thing it doesn't do is radio telescopy. Well, we went to the dispatch area over there and found a seriously large box. With the client's permission, we opened up the box and had a good look at the components. You see, when you buy a modular telescope, there are a lot of options you need to decide on. So let's have a look. And I'll just uh, give myself a paper cut. Put the lead on it. <laughs> All right, now uh, I'm going to need some help. <laughs> this is enormous. Just pop that, pop that camera down. We'll just. Well, here it is. That was hard work. It's very heavy. Let's open up this thing. We should see inside what we've got. Yeah, once we got into the box, we were so overwhelmed that we decided that we'd pull out the components in turn, check them over and take some photos. After that, we'd come back and say what they all are and what they do. Oh. This is gonna make some solar observer incredibly happy. That is a telescope. Of course, we're gonna start with the OTA. It's a 130 millimeter refractor with a triplet cell up the front. I think the critical element is FPL 51 glass. Uh, this means that when it's in its nighttime configuration, you'll get nearly no chromatic aberration. In the daytime configuration, you attach the echelon, or both of them if you've got the double stack, and you use the various filters and blockers to enable you to see the sun. So you've got to build it for whatever target you're looking at. Oh my goodness gracious, that, look at the size of that thing. This telescope has uh, three focuses available, I think. A standard rack and pinion focuser, a Crayford, or a two inch feather touch. Um, this one is the feather touch. Typical for the refractor, the focus range is quite long. It goes out, you know, good, a good amount. I'm thinking that the scope is going to be used mostly for solar work, so we'll start there. This is the white light wedge. This is used for full spectrum viewing, which is kind of similar to when you use a refractor to project the image of the sun onto a piece of paper. Perhaps not surprisingly, uh, I haven't actually pulled this wedge apart, but I think it's a Herschel wedge, where the front of the glass wedge reflects only a small part of the light, and the rest of it is directed off in another direction. It's a way of just turning down the brightness. With the white light wedge, you'll also be using a polarizing filter. This just turns the brightness down a little bit more, and it can also improve the sharpness of the image just a little bit. Now, white light viewing is one thing, but hydrogen alpha viewing is another thing entirely. You can see way more detail on the sun's surface and pick up prominences around the edges. Uh, to do that, you need the blocking filter. That's this one. A lot of the light we're getting from the sun's surface is the result of excited hydrogen electrons dropping back to their lower, en lower energy states. When they do this, they release a photon of exactly 656.3 nanometers. That's nearly infrared. The blocking filter gets rid of all frequencies above and below this frequency, and this gives you a super sharp image of the surface and the prominences. Kind of similar in concept to the hydrogen alpha filter, this is the calcium K wedge. Calcium images show you a light closer to the ultraviolet at 393.4 nanometers, I think it is. 
The images that this wedge picture picks up are sensitive to local magnetic field fluctuations, so what you see is quite different to what the hydrogen alpha wedge will show you. Now, 393.4 nanometers is very close to UV light, which means that human eyes aren't all that well attuned to it. So getting images with a camera is a lot better. Incidentally, a couple of weeks after unboxing the scope and getting the initial shots, our local astronomy society had a star party. And I actually got a view through this very telescope using the calcium K wedge and a monochrome camera. Kevin, the owner, had a black hood over the screen so we could see it better, like the old things with the old cameras. And when I got underneath and saw the screen, I screamed like a kid. I mean, the image was that good. What else can you get? This is the LUNT double stack module. Um, the module provides a second and much more aggressive filter to the light coming through the scope. And it reduces the band pass of the etalons to less than 0.5 angstroms. Now, this double stack makes the image a lot sharper, as well as doing other things like showing you the Doppler effect. You can actually tell which limb of the sun is rotating towards us and which is rotating away. You also get some LUNT eyepieces. Um, these are 1.25 inch eyepieces. Now you might not know it, but you need good eyepieces for solar viewing. Most of the heat from the sun will be removed by the various filters, including that white light wedge, but there's a chance that the eyepieces are gonna get hot and that they need to be, uh, they, they need to be built to take this. Um, I have actually seen cheaper uh, eyepieces actually melt and the smoke that they produce when they, do the, when they do that really doesn't do your scope any good at all. Moving to nighttime imaging, the scope can come with a 0.8 times reducer flattener. Um, now with this, you get a wider, brighter field. It also reduces the curvature of the focal plane, meaning the stars at the edges of your field are gonna be sharper. Um, if you use a full frame sensor for deep sky imaging, you're definitely gonna need this. It's absolutely necessary. Finally, you'll see that the package our client got was so optioned up that there wasn't actually room in the enormous case for a two inch diagonal. Well, that was okay, we supplied one ourselves. So, the LUNT LS130 multi-purpose telescope is quite a beast. During the day, it's a double stack solar scope for white, hydrogen alpha and calcium K light. During the night, it's a visual and imaging triplet apo. It'll take some time to change the scope from night, daytime to nighttime from configurations, and I'm not really sure you'd want to do that in the field, but it really is an all-round monster. At its new home, um, up on a mount, the LS130 MT really looks the part too. Out in the field, it looks even better, and I can tell you from being there, that scope was quite a hit at the recent star party. Kevin, the owner, has already taken some photos, a couple of which you've seen before. These are just the start, of course, so we're looking forward to seeing his images in the future. And, of course, the solar maximum, where we are now, is a great time to be in solar astrophotography. So that's about it for now. If you found this video helpful, then have a look at the others on the Sidereal Trading YouTube channel. Um, rate, like, subscribe, comment, whatever. We respond to comments as soon as we can, um, and I guess we'll see you next time.